Good morning and welcome to another Nerdy Catholic vlog. As you can see by my background, this is another Journey Home Taping Week, and I got to spend some time with one of the guests today, Carlos Zamora, who is also known as C26. He is a Catholic hip-hop artist. I got to spend a little bit of time with Carlos before and after his taping, and I wanted to share a little bit of this behind the scenes with you. I've, I've such a blessing for me, as I've said before, every month to be able to come down and meet four people as they share their story about why they became Catholic. And I just wanted to share a little bit of that experience with you. Coming up. Carlos Zamora is a good friend of my coworker Matt Swaim, and Matt and I have been talking about going down to Dallas for a while to do some interviews with him and some of his fellow uh, Catholic hip hop artists. Uh, and fortunately for me, Carlos flew up to Ohio to tape the journey home, and so I was able to meet him. I do still want to go down at some point to Dallas to meet up with uh, Carlos and some of the other Catholic hip hop artists that he works with down there. You can find Carlos at Foundation. Foundation is a group of Catholic hip hop artists that Carlos has helped start. And I will link that YouTube channel down in the uh, description below. You can see a number of his uh, videos on there. I wanted to share first some of the conversation that I had with Carlos before he started taping his Journey Home episode. I wanted to find out what his expectations were, what he was thinking before he started taping as he was sitting in the interview chair. So uh, are you looking forward to the show? Definitely. What, what's, uh, what are some of the thoughts that you've had kind of thinking about being on the show? You know, honestly, on my, my journey back to into the faith, right, into the church, this program was very cemental on that. Really? Like, I watched mostly on YouTube because I didn't have EWT and I didn't have cable at the time. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just watched this, this program, just, you know, random episodes, just pick one that sounded interesting. And, and I watched it regularly. I probably watched at least, you know, two or three episodes a week mm -hmm. during that time. And... And then, you know, thank you for, or I'm here now, and, you know, in this seat, there's a, a, a very big presence of anti-Catholicism mm -hmm. in the Christian hip-hop scene. Yeah. Not everybody, you know, yeah. but it's, it's it's a big enough presence towards it's, you know, affected me. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I feel like, you know, people just won't give you the time of day. Yeah. You know, but if this is, if there's something you kind of present them and say, you know, at your convenience, take a look. Yeah. Just, just when you have a, chance, a little time. Sit down, just take a look. Listen, I'm not asking you to necessarily agree with me. I just want you to see where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And I think I can present this to a lot of like the forums that I'm involved with, with the, Catholic, with the other Christian rappers that are not Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still do a lot of Protestant events mm -hmm. as a Catholic rapper, yeah. which is kind of crazy to me because they know how outspoken I am about my Catholic yeah. faith. Yeah. And they still invite me to come out and do these events. So I, 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 I feel like, in a sense, that's... That's, you know, that's just showing me that they, even though they might be resisting it to a certain mm -hmm. level, they're still not completely shut off right. to Catholicism. Right. You know what I mean? For various reasons. And I think part of it is that most of the Protestant people I come across, especially in the Christian hip-hop circles, mm -hmm. are not far removed from Catholicism. Right. In fact, a lot of them are, are still kind of one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. And, and, and are a lot of them probably like, you know, one or two generations literally removed. If that. Yeah. If that. Uh -huh. Some of them, like I said, are, are kind of one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. They might be going to mass on holidays. Uh-huh. And going to... With their family. Yeah, with yeah. non-denominational churches uh, on, on weekends, uh, other weekends, right? Yeah. Uh, so they're kind of in and out, kind of... So they haven't really completely denounced their Catholic faith, mm -hmm. but they're not regularly yeah. Yeah. You know, practicing their Catholic faith. Yeah. So it's a lot of that. Well, and, and as you said before, you, you know, I think I think this will be a place where you can, and you know, I think so many people have in that seat shared the story where they can say, "This is where I came from." Yeah. I am so thankful yeah. for that. You know, yeah. I'm so thankful for the Protestant group that I was involved in because yeah. you know, I learned scripture. I learned yeah. you know so many things, yeah. and now I you know, I want to bring that in with me, so you so you can have someone watching where they can both be challenged and affirmed at the same time. Exactly, yeah. And that's one thing I'm, I'm always very aware of. I, I try not to be critical of, or, you know, of individuals. You mm -hmm. know? 
I might be, um, I might challenge, you know, particular doctrines, particular lines of thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm not criticizing the person per se. Yeah. You know, I want to be real careful about that. I don't want people to feel like I'm condemning them or I'm, right. you know, it's just like, yeah, I do want to challenge your thinking. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, there's no, no beating around the bush about that. I do want to challenge your thinking. Uh, cause somebody challenged my thinking at one point in time, you know, and it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I don't want anybody to feel like I'm condemning them personally. Yeah. Cause I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you know, I've been there and done that. And I've probably been in, in far worse predicaments than some of the people that I'm hoping to reach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like I, 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 I have no place to judge. You know, I'm not in a place to judge them. You package it wrongly, um, so they come after the messenger. Well, good luck. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Thank good show. Okay. One of the things that Carlos shares in his Journey Home episode is he talks about the song where he mentions all four Marian dogmas in one, I think it's maybe a 10 second period of the song. And so I wanted to share that part of the song with you. Spouse of the spirit, the daughter of the father, the mother of the son, you do the highest honor, mother of the king, that makes the queen of heaven, perpetual virgin, immaculate conception, assumed into heaven at the moment of your death. The Bible says that all generations call you blessed, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. The so woman caught your death for three days in the tomb. Pray for us now and at the hour of our death, so we can see the pretty gates when we lay the rest. Blessed Mother Mary, let me proclaim my love for you, just like your only. Son, Jesus Christ wants me too. It was neat to see Marcus talking with Carlos and Marcus stretching himself out of his own comfort zone. You know, Hip-hop music is something that Marcus has never had any experience with. And so it was interesting to see Marcus take some of his own experience in music and have a wonderful discussion with Carlos about how he comes up with his own lyrics for his songs. Carlos also mentioned in his interview that he had the opportunity to perform at Catholic World Youth Day with some other hip-hop artists in Panama and uh, and what an amazing experience that was for him and how he was able to touch so many lives. Whenever you watch The Journey Home, you always see into someone's life. You see into parts of their spiritual journey. And that is why I love this part of my job. I get to spend time with different people, learn their journeys and talk to them more, you know, even outside of the interview, hear more of their story. And you know, we always have wonderful conversations around the lunch table. I wish I'd had my camera out at lunchtime, I forgot. But uh, maybe in one of these future behind the scenes, I'll have the camera out during lunchtime so we can hear some of the conversation that we as a staff are able to have with the guests, going deeper into their story sharing our stories with them and finding so many intersections between all of our stories. Find the places of commonality that we all have as we journeyed into the Catholic Church. So how'd it go? Better than I anticipated. Yeah. It was really good, yeah. I still can't believe that I'm here in the seat and it went by a lot faster than I thought it would go by. Yeah. I thought we were 15 minutes into the interview and it was over. And I was like, whoa, okay, that's cool. So do you think there's anything in your conversation that, that came out that you weren't planning on saying or expecting that, but you you feel like really had hope, you know, had an impact? I do. I did. That did happen. Yeah. Um, um, I don't think I've really ever articulated um, about how my dad kind of was the one that kind of sparked that conversion, even though I didn't recognize it at that moment in the conversation we had, where he kind of told me that you know that those types of gifts or those types of things are not given to you by God. You know, the gift in its, itself might have been given to you by God, but those types of, you know, the, doing the gangster rap or the, you know, making money off of, you know, neg negativity mm -hmm. or, you know, stuff like that is not necessarily a gift. That's not a gift from God. It comes from somewhere else. Yeah. And it was only a couple of weeks later where I had that conversion experience at the concert. So uh, I don't think I've never really articulated that before. Because it really only kind of, I really only kind of made sense out of that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Or, you know, in kind of anticipating this conversation with Marcus, I was really kind of like articulating my thoughts. And that's where, where it came from. And that was the first time I think I've ever said that publicly. Yeah. Well, and can you, can you say again, tell, tell me again the, the story of the jacket. Awesome. Oh, the story of this jacket, this particular jacket yeah. here. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. 
my my dad passed away in 2013, October 19th of 2013, and, and I apparently, you know, as far as I can, as I know, he had bought this this particular jacket maybe just shortly before he died, maybe a couple weeks before he died, and didn't get a chance to wear it, and so it still had the tags on it and everything, and and then um, not too long ago, a few months back, you know, my sister had the jacket at the house because she lives at the house my dad used to live in. And she's like, hey, you know, you're the only one that's probably would fit. Why don't you just take it? You know, Dad never used it. And when I got it, it didn't fit me. I've lost a lot of weight. I've lost about 50, 60 pounds since that time. It didn't fit me. It was too small. I thought, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll just hang out to it anyway, you know, just as a memory or something. Mm-hmm. And so I took it with me. And then as I, as I was getting ready for this, this, this show, this interview, I had some, some coats, some sports coats and stuff that, that I haven't worn for a long time, and I was much heavier at the time when I was wearing them, so they're too big on me now. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need to go find me a coat to wear. And as you and I both know, those coats are expensive, and I, <laughs> it's kind of money I don't have right at the moment. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I probably better not waste that money. There's probably better ways I can spend that money. And so I was like, well, what, what, what am I going to do about a coat? And I was like, well, let me, let me look at the one my dad had and I tried it on, and it fit me perfectly. You know, it fit me just perfectly. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. I was, and it, it really just made me feel like, like he was, you know, he bought it for this occasion. He was just waiting for the, for the right time for me to, to wear it. And this was the occasion for that. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. So you, yeah. th- you think he's, he's looking down on you wearing this, this coat for the first time at Pride? Yeah. I do think so. I do think so. And that's one of the things I'm, I've, I've, I've talked about this in, in the past, more in private than in public, because it's, you know, kind of an emotional thing. But, uh, you know, growing up, you know, I, I, I didn't feel like I ever made my, my, my mom and my dad proud. You know, I never, um, I, I never heard them, you know, say it to me at least, you know. I didn't, you know, I just never heard, never felt like I made them proud. In fact, I, I felt like I hurt them more than anything, right? with my life and and so it, it does mean a lot to me to, to to think that he's looking down on me and he's proud of me you know it does mean a lot mean a lot to me uh more than you can probably imagine you know it's it's a it's, it's really a really good feeling yeah. well and we can just ask for him to pray for the the, the fruit to come from in this episode yeah definitely definitely um yeah, I think I think he's looking down on me. I think my mom's looking down on me and being, being proud of me. My, both my parents are deceased. Uh, my mom passed away in 2002, January 20th of 2002. Um, and you know, I beat myself up for a long time after her passing. I, because you know, I again, I, I felt like I didn't do anything but break her heart while she was alive. I, she never had a chance to really see me make these changes in my life and you know, um, become a devout. You know, Christian and devout Catholic, and so you know, I beat myself up for a long time about that. And you know, now, late, you know, as I've matured in my faith, I, I realize that she can see me now, and she can look down at me now, and she does. She is looking down at me, and she's proud of me. And in retrospect, I, I know she was proud of me back then too. Mm-hmm. She, you know, I know how much a, a parent loves their child, regardless of how they're, you know, how they. How far away they might be from their faith, you know, because I, I love my children more than anything. I can, you know, more than words can explain, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my wife loves our children more than words can explain, and it wouldn't matter what they did. I, I still love them the same way. This is Journey Home episode will be airing at 8 p.m. Eastern on Monday, August 12th. I highly encourage you to check it out. You can see it on EWTN. You can either watch it on their cable network. You can watch it. They have uh, a Roku app or on their website, EWTN.com. We we're also able to sit down with Carlos and do an interview with him for some of the insights videos that we do for the Coming Home Network YouTube channel. I'll post links to those in the community tab uh, when they come out. I encourage you to head on over to Nerdy Catholic Tees, the merch store for That Nerdy Catholic. We have, a reminder, we have our state rosary t-shirts and uh, stickers and mugs. We just added California and Illinois And so that brings us to, I think, seven states now. You can see here some of the other state rosaries that we have. I want to remind you that whenever you purchase over at Nerdy Catholic Tees, you help support this channel. You can watch another video up here. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, you want to join this community, hit that subscribe button, 
that like button if you like this video and that little bell to get a notification whenever I put up a new video. Check out Carlos's YouTube channel, Foundation. We can see some of his latest music videos. I hope to see you again next week and God bless.